Good evening, guys and ghouls. It's time for the show you've been lurking forward to all week. Unfortunately, that's been delayed, and all you have left to watch is The Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek, pop culture, drenched in absurdity, and coated with sarcasm. Every week, we bring on an industry guest, or two in this case, to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse and to play a game with us. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Paul Bearer Bryant, and I'm joined this week by my co-host, Mike the Mutant Kafis. I got my goat weed and my B&B. <laughs> and our guests this week are Paul Fiendmaster Cooley. Howdy, howdy, howdy. And C.D. Gravedigger Brown. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. I actually As you... do. I, uh, I'm going to tell you this. Oh, no. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Already we're going to have a conversation about Charlie's time as Burke and Hare. Okay. No. That, that's what's going on in New Orleans. This is, this is, a, this is, a, true, this is a true story. I do, have a, I do have a really weird nickname that was given to me by Vin Diesel. I am not lying. Okay. I was hanging out with him on the on the set of uh, of uh, uh, Boiler Room because I was good friends with Nikki Cat and I was working on a script for Nikki Cat and that cool. movie Boiler Room and we're all hanging out in New York and Vin wanted me to write Vin possibly wanted me to write something for him and he I said he said what do you normally write I said well I write a lot and this was a, a while ago I write a lot of you know crime stuff and some hard boiled detective stuff and he goes what are you some sort of psychopath are we gonna wake up one day and find Nikki Cat stabbed in the neck with a pencil? And he said, "Yeah, it was." <laughs> and they would say, "Yeah, it was that uh, Charlie Manslaughter Brown." Oh. And, there, and, there, and there are still people to this day who call me Manslaughter Brown. I can totally uh, see this, actually. I, I like can completely see this. <laughs> hey, yeah. uh, change the script. That's not Grave Digger Brown. That's Manslaughter Brown. Manslaughter, Manslaughter Brown. Brown. All right. Had I known, I would have included Short that. Short story I, I have not told that story in probably 15 years. So. <laughs> hey, Paul, I, I see. I, I, you know, I, you do all these stories and stuff. I see a, I see a Manslaughter Brown in there somewhere. That's, that's what I'm saying, man. I, I, I think I just wrote down the name of a new short story. So thank you, Charlie. Fantastic. <laughs> you've never used, you've never put me in the graveyard because you can't, because I'm, you know, Charlie Brown. But yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Brown. yeah, yeah. I'll He's find so a way. Challenge yeah. accepted. I'll we're find still, a way. We're still waiting for our turn. He can't get to that, that last black book. Uh, oh, that's Mike right. That's right yeah. You're going to be in the fifth black book. Good. Is that fifth coming black book. anytime soon? Uh, fourth black book is I'm editing right now on a quarter nice. quarter way done editing. It's going to take the, at least the rest of the week, but then I should have it out to beta readers and whatnot. I Hot hope. dog. I need to get some more black. I like the Marines, but I do like my black too. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. That yeah, was fun to go back to. It was fun to go back to. Yeah. I'm, I am responsible for a minor bit of uh, black trivia. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, do you tell. Know that? Do you know that? <laughs> Ask the question. Let's is that anything like Black Jeopardy? Or is it? No, go ahead. Sorry. Well, no, the oh, ham no. story. Does everybody know the ham story, or do we have to elucidate this? <laughs> the ham story? No. I... There's a, in uh, the first black in the first black book. There's a story about uh, somebody having their way with a ham. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my that actually happened to a friend of mine. Like my friend was <laughs> ran kitchens on oil rigs and i gave that to paul i gifted that story to paul <laughs> hmm. and i'm not going to i'm not going to go into detail you will have to buy the book you yeah. see? <laughs> see what i'm doing for you mr cooley i Let's appreciate the pimpage i appreciate it wow <laughs> that's an american pie a ham huh oh yes it is uh, yes it is yes american ham <laughs> okay <laughs> all right hey you know what? I'm feeling kind of frisky. I'm thinking I'm going to go up and grab one of those bars of Scrapple and take care yeah. of that bitch. <laughs> oh, I'm not Scrapple. Scrapple. Oh, yeah. Oh. As we can now say, as we all know, Peter loves that Scrapple. Maybe hey, too sir. much. Skirt steak does not make a good condom, no matter how tightly you wrap it. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm making this cube steak. And All we're right. off. And we're off. Right. It's it's hey, on, baby. Were, were we talking about horror movies? Or yeah, is not this, even, yeah, well, we like, are now. <laughs> Trust me. The audience horror is food. looking at all of us talking about banging hams and scrapple. It's a horror movie. <laughs> Straight up horror movie. I would oh, be horrified. <laughs> all right. God. So the goal tonight is I've 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 asked everyone, me included, 
I asked myself, self, uh, come up with three horror movies that were most influential to you. Like, what what three movies in uh, horror movies influenced you the most over you know over your life? Uh, and they can be for any number of reasons. I mean, maybe you got. I don't know. Maybe you got terrified as a kid, and now you're afraid to go in the water. Maybe you saw Jaws or whatever. So, <clears throat> anyway, uh, I'm I'm going to let uh, I'm going to let my guests go first uh, because you know we're courteous like that. Uh, let me let me start with uh, let me start with Paul. He's bunch, did a bunch of horror books. Um, Paul, what is uh, what? You what write movie? the horror, Paul. What yeah, what, what, what you got? <laughs> What's your, uh... what, tra- what damaged your childhood to make these things possible? <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, okay, in no Blue particular Oyster order. Cult. Dude, wasn't that, Charlie? Blue Oyster Cult. Yeah, Blue Oyster Cult. <laughs> that, that was enough right there. The shortest rock band in history. Uh, I'll just keep throwing out these wild-ass facts. Go, go fact check it. You'll find them right. Uh, in no particular order, the three I, I could decide on as the most influential, and there's a ton of others behind them, Alien, Carpenter's The Thing, and The Exorcist. Let's just go. On, we'll go one at a time. We'll go around okay. one at a time. Okay. So, so let let's do Alien because, and then I'll go second. But let's just you and I talk right now, unless Alien's on anyone else's list, because Alien's on my list too. Anybody else got Alien? Alien? One, two, three. Uh, no, no, no but it's, it's it's a masterpiece. It's an All absolute right. masterpiece. So, so Paul, what is it about Alien that 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 affected you so much? I think part of the mystique comes from when I was a kid and the commercials would go on. And, and the commercials were enough to scare the shit out of me. They never showed what came out of the egg. It was just the egg vibrating and cracking, and it was enough to just give me freaking nightmares. Oh, yeah. And then I saw the movie, you know, several years later. It's the, the stifling claustrophobia of where they are. It is the isolation. It is all of those things where there is absolutely nowhere to hide because it could be anywhere. Right. I just love that. And then it's dark. It's grubby. It gets it gets what I imagine a starship to look like, yeah. You know, especially a freighter. It just yeah. has that look and feel to it, and and that adds to it. It doesn't have any of that shiny, glitzy. Hey, we've got all the technology in the world. This is a a working ship with working people. They're not scientists of any shape, you know, fashion or form, except for the android, yeah. and they're locked in with this thing. And that is just fantastic horror because everybody is terrified. Any of them could get picked off at any one time and they have to figure out a way to get the hell out of it. And, and there's nowhere you know, to go. And there's nowhere space. to go. It's like, yeah, we have to get out of here. Out of where? To, to <laughs> where? <Right? laughs> what do you mean out? There's no out. Out is worse than in. <laughs> you know? out, out is rather cold and uh, kind of, well, kind of leave you breathing hard. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I gotta, I, I've said this before on the show and I'll, I'll just hit mine just real quick. Um, it's just, it's a fantastic movie from beginning to end. Every aspect of it, it's a perfect 10. This is, a, this is, as there's only a few movies that I would consider a perfect 10 and, and Alien is one of them. Just everything about it, the cinematography, the acting, the story, the, the, the setup and it, God damn, the setup is so good. Like you said, they're on a spaceship, but it's not just any spaceship. It's a mining freighter spaceship like so it's this big empty thing there's not a lot of people in a lot of places to hide a lot of dirty like it's it's a maintenance ship so you've got this grubby alien lots of shit for him to crawl around in and it all and makes you, sense yeah, you've been a, you've been asleep you come out of, awake you're not yes. supposed to do that so something <laughs> you wake up knowing something's wrong right and they're totally set up so not only are they set up they wake up they don't know what they're getting into and everything one of their fucking crew knows exactly what's going on and is setting them up and it turns out oh, fuck he's not even human and you don't know and they're very good about hiding it like i don't know about you but i had no idea because i was nine when i saw it i had no idea <laughs> but well, and, i, I and had forgotten that they yeah i had forgotten that they had they had kept that secret oh, well, yeah. one of the things one of the things that's great about alien is that it that it you know it takes it takes a trope it takes a very old trope. It's a haunted house film. At yeah, its core, it's a haunted yeah. house film. Mm-hmm. Without, with no, with unlike, you know, without the Eddie Murphy joke, you know, yeah, we could just leave. <laughs> you know, right. uh, yeah. Where it was, so it's an actually improvement. But one of the one of the great things about it is that, and they they start to explore it in the in the later ones. Is you've got that you know that anti corporate vibe going on there too. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's a there's a real there's a real social issue. That's kind of rumbling under the surface. That you know these workers are much are much less worthy of this thing that that the that the corporation will see as benefiting, even though we know there's no benefit to anything by having this kind right. of thing. But still, 
they value the product more than they value the worker. I mean, it's a, it's a, you know, it, there's probably a, a really great uh, film studies paper of a Marxist uh, <laughs> interpretation <laughs> yeah. of alien. Marxist yeah. interpretation sure. of alien. Not that and, I would write it, but you know. And there's yeah. and there's the whole there's the whole it's got that theme that that ongoing theme. Same thing with like Walking Dead has this theme. A lot of horror movies have this theme where you have this horrific creature, this this thing or these horrific creatures, and the people are worse. Right, the people are worse than the fucking monsters, right? Because like the monster is just being itself; it's just being a monster. You know, it doesn't. It it's not even being malicious. Like Alien, it's just you know wants to procreate and wants to eat. You know, it's just a predator. It's a top level predator, right? But the people are fucking selling each other out, right? It's not a predator. It's an alien, Pete. <laughs> but anyway, so no, no. The pre see the predator doesn't qualify because the predator is a sentient being that is doing shit maliciously. Right? Yeah, it's a hunter. It's a hunter. The, yeah. Right. The alien, the the xenomorphs, as they're called, right. they're yeah. they're kind of innocent, really. They're they're just being xenomorphs. It's what they are. Right. Doing right? what they were bred to do. Yeah. 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 So that, that's pretty. They, cool. yeah, they, they even kind of nail the point even better in the second one. I mean, not that the second one is. I, they're they're such different films. Oh, they're yes. vastly but, yeah. different. Vastly different, but but they really nail a lot of the themes with the Paul Reiser character in Aliens. Yes. You know, where they really like, okay, if you didn't get this, we're going to hammer it home. Corporations are evil. <laughs> right. I don't know what I don't know which is worse, the them or you. You yeah, don't right, see them exactly. fucking each other for over for a percentage. <laughs> right, exactly. exactly. All right, exactly. so Jonathan has a question, and uh, I have my answer. He was asking, is Alien more of a horror film or a science fiction movie? And I, I say it's definitely both. No, it's, uh, it's, but yes. it's more horror. Yeah. It's probably. more horror than science fiction. It, yeah, it, I mean, it, it takes place on a ship. I would say, I would say the second movie is science fiction more yes. than horror. The second one's military science fiction. Horror. Yeah, the yeah. first one is more horror. The second one is more yeah. science fiction. But they both have elements of both in, in them. It, I, and it's well, more it's more of that thriller horror. It's not like there's it's a total uh what is that like a bloodbath or anything. I mean, you know, that's not the first smarter. one. No, the first yeah, one's like not. the suspenseful. Yeah. It's, no, it's a slow burn. It's, it's got a lot of yeah. thrill. Slow burn. It's a lot of, yeah. lot of thriller. But you know I what? Loved it. I, I have to say, you know, by going by the like the, the definition of science fiction, it, it does qualify as science fiction. I mean, it's 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 oh, very yeah. much a science fiction mm -hmm. film oh, as yeah, well. Yeah. Because science fiction uses the science to tell the human story, right? It it uses like a lot of science, but it's not about the science, it's about the humans in that science. And and Alien does do that as well. So I would say, yeah, you know, I got I always thought of it as just a pure horror film that just happened to be in the future. But no, it, it, it's science fiction too. So yeah. I'd say both. Xenomorphs be like, what's a guy gotta do to hug a face around here? <laughs> uh... <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, so let's. Ooh, boy. That, I have nothing else to say about Alien that hasn't been said before. Uh, Mike, or no, let's go, Charlie. Charlie, Charles, what's, okay. what's your okay. first? Um, so uh, I'm going to admit to not being the the biggest horror fan in the world because I'm a sensitive soul and I jump a lot. Uh, I thought I, I was going to be the one to say that. Oh, okay, well, thanks well, for taking okay, the so I'm, I'm sorry that I beat you to it. So, you know, <laughs> so the, the scariest thing that I've been watching lately is, uh, you know, the, trying to watch the Saints play defense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if that hurt the Ravens fans. I know that. Sorry, guys. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I don't, I don't really watch the it. sports ball, so I don't care. <laughs> I, I do watch sports ball, and yes, it hurts. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> anyway, um... So I I tend to go more towards the gothic. I tend to lean towards the gothic and the and the the kind of over uh, kind okay. of overheated kind of stuff, which we'll, we will see as as we go along. So the first one I'm going straight to the source material. I'm going straight to Nosferatu, the 1922 nice. by F. W. Murnau. Wow, that's um, good. And uh, one of the great things about I just rewatched it uh, in preparation for this. Now we have to remember this was at a very primitive time in film. Film was still silver at this point in time. We were exposing light to silver nitrate, Ooh. and so you can't really have uh, you can't really have the, the the controlled shadows and all that sort of stuff. And yet, Murnau does some really amazing stuff with this. So you have you have and the grotesqueries that are, are involved in this. So you have uh, Count Orlock. As, uh, if you don't know, Nosferatu is literally Dracula with the, with the, with the uh, numbers filed off. It's Count Orlock. It's not Jonathan 
Parker, it's Hutter, it's all this different stuff. But the uh, the Renfield character who goes, but uh, goes, uh, I can't remember his name right now. But uh, the Renfield character is also a grotesque little man with like bald and kind of crazy white hair and big eyebrows. There's a lot of big eyebrows in this. Um, but the way he plays with the shadows available to him, you know, uh, specifically the the most famous scene where where Count Orlock reaches out and his shadow is over her over Mina's heart and he grabs the the air and she rushes to it. Also, the stop motion, which I, I don't know, maybe Melies did stop motion beforehand, but this has got to be one of the first stop motion films too. There's a lot of it to show how Orlock is more powerful than everyone around him. The right. um, uh, all of this, all of this was also examined later on in a very bad movie called Shadow of the Vampire. Oh, uh, with, with William Defoe. Yeah, with Defoe as Max Schrenk and uh, yeah. and um, and and I uh, like that. I like that movie. Shut up, Charlie. Well, I actually I've met the screenwriter a couple of times. He hates the film oh. uh, because because he thought he thought he wrote one film and and another one ended up on screen. That never happens in Hollywood. Never. I, know. Never. I just never. felt like I just felt like th there's some very good stuff in there. I never felt like it totally connected. Um, the the director was apparently a, a real goofball. <laughs> but anyway. So, so Charlie, tell me if this is true. Tell me if you know this. So uh -huh. I was reading something today, as a matter of fact, that that the guy Max Shrek was. Uh, they found him like in an abandoned. Was he sleeping in an abandoned church? Something. I don't about, know. I don't know that much about him. I know that he never made another film. Right. But I, I, I did. Yeah, I did see a picture of him, and he doesn't. You know, he does. He's tall and gaunt, but he's not like bald. He doesn't look like that. Right. They actually did have a historical picture of him. Yeah. And I, I, mean, I heard you know, somewhere that that a lot of uh, a lot of actors were stage actors, and they didn't. They felt that film was beneath them because film was this new, like, weird thing. That right? is was definitely it? true. That is definitely true. And if you see, because of silent films, the acting style is a lot more huge. I mean, you had to really play it up, and that's one of the that's one of the things you kind of have to you kind of have to rewire your brain to watch some silent film. Yeah, not so much. Chaplin and uh, and and Lloyd and and Buster Keaton, but like the more dramatic stuff where you know you have these big oh and you know, oh yes and all that sort of stuff. And there is a little bit of that in Murnau. Um, but one of the great things is you can watch this film, which is a you know it's a, a straight up horror film, a lot of creepy stuff, but he still uses almost all of the same techniques that would go on to into his real ma his next masterpiece is be better film sunshine okay uh, which which really established a lot of the film vocabulary uh between murnau and uh dw griffith that old racist bastard <laughs> <laughs> you, you really see the development of 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 cinema and murnau uses a lot of irises and that sort of thing you just didn't have the technology that we have now but still he managed to ring so much uh, mod modernity out of what is definitely a primitive uh, art form at the time. Mm. So, hey, so we got a question. We got a question in the chat room. Spence is asking, Pan's Labyrinth, is that horror? I, You know, I've never sat through that mm. whole movie. I've, I've only watched a few minutes of it. I would say it's a gothic horror. Gothic horror, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Horror. Yeah. Uh, it, now, in, is it in, worth in, watching? Because I haven't school. seen it. It's yeah. in the old school of gothic horror. It's like it's like a hammer film. Okay. Would you I, say it, that, Paul? Yeah, I said it, it's definitely horror. Yeah. Uh, Mike was asking if it was worth watching. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think it's a great film. I had I had a hard time watching it, but I like got into it like I don't know somewhere thirty minutes in maybe, and I was kind of like, yeah, maybe I need to watch this from the beginning because I'm. Well, I will be talking it. about Del Toro later, so. Yeah, okay. Cool. Can... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got to keep on schedule. Mike, what is your uh -huh. first? What's your first? Uh, uh, okay, Herrick. this is going to sound a little cliche, but to follow up on sort of what um, uh, Charlie said, I am not the biggest fan of horror, but I do appreciate a good horror film. It's just that I haven't watched a whole lot of them. And I know. I st Stop shaming me. Stop horror shaming me, Paul. I'm not, I haven't yes, said you a word. are. I haven't you said a word. Shame I feel horror shamed. 
Are you shiv because that's what I'm doing no, in my no. head. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you're just you're just getting my inner voice through the internet, Mike. It happens all the time. The internet. The internet. <laughs> so, I control okay. the internets. <laughs> so mine is actually going to be uh, the first one I picked was Saul. Uh, for me, uh, and it's hard for me to say this. I don't want to speak like a like a, a movie, you know, horror movie, um, you know. Uh, know it all but i know that horror had been dead for a while for a, a number of years before that and i think it reinvigorated and did bring a lot of people into the horror um genre that, that hadn't previously been there I, I know people i i don't know i all i can say is I, I i sat down and finally watched that movie and it was a few years later afterwards but someone convinced me to watch it and i was like oh my god <laughs> oh my god and so i i do prefer a movie with a psychological twist, uh, you know, just your typical bloodbaths. You know, to me, I'm just like, it's fake. It's nothing. I don't know. You know, it's and anything in the, um, all, you know, the, uh, I guess, like fantasy, the, the supernatural is kind of like, well, that's fake. So something that's real. I was talking to someone this weekend who said that he and I view the same thing the same, in the opposite way. He likes the more uh, mystical and supernatural horror movies because it's different than, to, than than just what you can see in the real world and to me it's like oh that is some real shit right there that's what makes it even scarier like yeah. that shit could actually happen yeah i mean it's kind of the the jeffrey dahmer effect right like yeah. what is what is more what is more scary a vampire or jeffrey dahmer now that's that's up for personal taste right but, you know. <laughs> See what you did there. No, I didn't even mean to. Back, back to your, your comment Boy, about. I had a mouthful of that one. <laughs> back to your comment about horror had been dead for a while. I guess you're right. Saw is when we started getting all those other pictures, and the guys that were all involved in Saw are the folks that made Sinister, The Conjuring, uh, Insidious, uh, all these other horror films. All these guys that were involved in that mm -hmm. spread out, and they've basically created all these different types of of horror movies that have gone back to the old tricks, which is mixing the supernatural with the psychological, but making it down to earth and seemingly possible at the same time. Yeah. You Throwing just have to swallow- Alfred Hitchcock in there. Yeah, you have to yeah. swallow a single oh, yeah. conceit and you're well on your way. It's, Sinister will just destroy you because of the soundtrack, but mm. um, wow, that movie's harsh, I love it. But the, that, that kind of horror is, is much more enjoyable than Friday the 13th, uh, you know, the, the old Halloween, the, the, the teeny slasher flicks. Yeah, uh, I've never seen the original Halloween, but I hear that that one's a masterpiece. It it, it is, is actually it is it, it is. is. It's, it's a good movie. The rest of them because, not so much. Yeah, because because in the original Halloween, he's correct me if I'm wrong, but if I'm, I haven't seen it in a while, but like he's not really supernatural in that, right? I mean, no. it's more. Well, he's just it's very touch, like a touch, right? But it's mostly like a big dude could probably do that. He's he's more or less unkillable in the first movie. Is he really okay? So they do the, do they stab him? And I know they do oh, that yeah. later. Okay. Oh yeah, they so kick not. his ass in that film, and he gets shot, and all sorts of other things. The, oh no, okay, maybe not. I'm, the I'm first not. Halloween made him into the shape, which okay. is what's so terrifying. Is that basically from twelve years old, he hasn't spoken a word, right? And he's turned into this emotionless thing. He's channeled something or transformed something. Who the hell knows? It's not explained, and that's part of what also gives you the shivers. Is there no? There's no explanation for this thing being in existence or being able to do what it does. So well, that's well, that's another key part of what it's a boogeyman, it's a boogeyman movie, yeah. right? Hmm. Yeah, well, it's a boogeyman well, movie. Well, don't let don't let Disney get a hold of it because they'll make a side picture and explain all the shit you never wanted to know, right? Um, <laughs> that I ruins think the Rob character. Zom I think Rob Zombie already did that. Yeah, I think <laughs> he did, did actually. He did. Yes. He did. All right, he, John, he did. John Walker was right. He said at the end, Mike Myers was uh, supernatural. He was okay. supernatural, baby. Baby, yeah. Oh, he had freaking lasers. All right, so um, so Tori Tori Duke <laughs> asked us a question. She says, she says, what freaks you out more, psychological? Uh, manipulation or gore and I, i'll go for i'll say psychological manipulation really freaks me out the most I, like there's some japanese movies are really good at doing that kind of stuff uh the, oh, that, yeah. the audition what is that audition? one the, audition yes yes that is fucking great yeah <laughs> anyway <Ooh. laughs> all right I'll, i will i will i will tell you i think if both are done in tandem and both are done well that is probably out they pile onto each other like if you're talking about and i was just listening to uh, a book they were talking about you know breaking fingers and i was just like oh god that was just like oh, yeah I, I i just yeah violence is 
Uh, psycho psychological stuff is bad. Violence for me is like is pretty is worse. I yeah, that's why that's why I stay away from slashers for the most. All right, part. hey, I'll throw I want to throw one out there real quick. I don't want to spend any time on this mm -hmm. really at all, but I'm going to tell you that the movie that that I walked away from feeling the most like, uh, uh, and I'm not I'm not trying to be funny. I, I swear it was the Passion of the Christ or not the Passion. Yeah, the Passion of the Christ. Oh, the Mel Gibson. Yeah. Fucking whipping him with the cat of nine tails and stuff, and you see the flesh coming off, and they just they basically just beat this dude for like a half an hour. It's like a snuff film. I I walked away. I was like, Jesus Christ! People had kids Literally, in there. Jesus Christ, accurate. Yes. Accurate. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I'm the snuffing of the Christ. There's an <laughs> argument to be made. That is snuffing the of the Christ. <laughs> oh, oh Lord! Cookie. My oh, Lord! I apologize. Winner Where are the lightning bolts. Holy <laughs> crap! <laughs> Winner. Even even Garaga just went. Whoa! Hey now. <laughs> nice. Well, there is an argument to be made that Passion of the Christ is the first torture porn movie. Yeah, I think so. Really do. Yeah, I think you're right. I remember when that came out. It came out at Easter, and I was with my very Catholic family. They all went to go see that, and I went to go see Hellboy, and I was the one that was seeing the movie that was was not as violent. Right? Yeah, it was way less violent. All right. Yeah. Anyways, let's let's move on. Paul, Paul, what's your what's your number two there? What what number number two movie? What number two movie? Like the I thing. Just add it up. The thing. Carpenter's yeah, the thing. thing. Yeah. 1982. Great. Yeah. So, nice. so what did that? How did, how does that like resonate with you? So, I mean, it's a good movie. Good movie. It's got the same, the same kinds of issues with Alien. It's claustrophobic. Mm -hmm. If you read my writing, you know I'm a big fan of claustrophobia. Yes, yes you are. <laughs> uh, it, it's wonderful to treats. Do. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stick the characters somewhere and don't let them get out. It's so much more fun that way. Um, but it also has this, these, these guys have known each other, been together for so many months or whatever. They know each other's habits. They have their own little loathings. Nobody seems to be really great friends with anyone. There's just kind of these tangential relationships. There's already tension there when we get there. And then when things start to happen, you get to watch each of these relationships really start to fall apart. And the worst thing is, Nobody knows who the thing is. Yeah. And they're trapped together. There's no, and you don't know, you have suspicions maybe, but you don't know. And that's part of the whole problem. And of course the main character is, is uh, on the outs because they think he's the thing. And yeah. that, that drives everything that goes forward from there. And the special effects are fucking phenomenally creepy. Yeah. You especially just, for that time. Like oh, for that time. Oh God. They're still that's good. Still perfect. decent. Oh yeah, they're still hold up. Yeah, there was no computers. <laughs> no, and and that that's the thing that makes that that film such a freaking classic is the fact that it it uses those effects, and instead of trying to make something recognizable, in many cases they went out of their way to make something unrecognizable. Yeah, it was, and, and, and that Paul, worked well. You so so it was it was funny because I for whatever reason it, it wasn't on purpose at all because I always wanted to see it. I would always catch – I didn't see it in a the theater, and I would always catch it like 15 minutes in or 20 minutes in. And I was like, no, no, no. I got to see this from the beginning. But I would never like go out and rent it, and I kept thinking about it. And, I, and it's just one of those movies. And like it was just like two years ago, I think, um, I said – I was like uh, – I posted on Facebook. I said, uh, all right, I'm going to admit something. I've never seen the thing. Oh, and you yeah. were the first person who commented, you need to fix that shit right now. <laughs> so <laughs> – I'm I rented you didn't it. Crawl through the internet and choke. Right. <laughs> I know, yeah. right? So I rented it that night and watched it, and I was like, "God damn, Paul's right's fucking great. <laughs> it's great." <laughs> you know, it was so good. It holds up because I saw it for the first time just a couple years ago, and it was awesome. And then I watched the sequel, which is really the prequel. The prequel. It was yeah. good. I liked it. Did you like it? I've never seen that one. I've never seen that one. It was good, but it was it could have done more. And there were some things that kind of ticked me off, and there were con there was at least two continuity problems that yeah, I had yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah. But yeah. you know, overall, overall they did a, a decent job of showing the breakdown. But essentially, it was just a remake of the thing. Yeah, that's essentially what it was. Yeah, it's just they they moved up the timeline and tried to show you what they were trying to do to destroy it and everything else. And then obviously, you know how the movie's going to end. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, I think they a did lot. a decent. I think they did a decent job with uh, doing the. Um, 
you know, like, like still keeping the movie a little unpredictable, even though you knew where it was going. Yeah, because we didn't know how things went down. Right. We only, we only found out sort of how things went down, but we had no idea how they went down. Right. And what were we saying? What about- I had the- oh, I was saying that um, John Walker said that, Pete, there are a lot of things you need to fix. Oh, yeah. And- yes. Oh, well, you use your powers for good if you wanted to get Pete to do something. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. I'm being irresponsible with my abilities. Is that what you're telling me, John? <laughs> never, never. All right, so Charles, what's your number two there? Which okay, I'm gonna uh, okay. So we started, we started with the vampire, and you know, I was like, since I, I didn't do a good job of pimping myself, since I am a vampire novelist, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you write hard. That's why I invited you. Yeah, right, right. Since I, well, I, I write, more. I write vampire. He writes novels. urban fantasy. I oh. write urban fantasy. All right. but, but anyway, you, so I um, I do write. Uh, so I, we we went with the original vampire movie Nosferatu, and then now we're going to go to one of the great uh, modern upgrades of it, uh, updates of it, and that is Chronos, uh, the very first film by Guillermo del Toro, Chronos. made in Mexico. Have you seen this? Who has no. seen this? Chronos. Okay, Chronos is the. Kronos is one of the closest movies I have seen to true Lovecraftian horror Ooh, on the screen. I'm writing that down, Kronos. Yeah, Kronos, uh, like the Time God. Yes. Right. Um, so, so this this is it's got the it's the perfect Lovecraftian kind of setup. It takes place in Mexico, and what it is 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 that uh, a junk shop owner gets this weird statue into his you know he comes across somebody sells it to him he pays for it he comes and then he breaks it and within it is this device this uh, spider-like device and he starts playing with the spider-like device and he's an older man he's in his you know, late 70s or mid 70s probably the thing snaps up it looks like a uh, it looks like a um you know like a beetle then it snaps open and it looks like a spider and it attaches to his chest that's not creepy. And, yeah, I know. And slowly, <laughs> you know, he, he shaves. He starts to look younger all of a sudden. His wife notices it. His granddaughter notices it. Oh. And, and somebody, uh, a mysterious man shows up uh, to buy the statue, one, specifically wants the statue, buys the statue, uh, takes it back, and then realizes that the Kronos device is not inside of it, so he goes to kill the old man and take the Kronos device back. It's really, it's a slow burn. It's, you know, again, it's, it's, it's early Del Toro. It's got all of the stuff from Pan's Labyrinth, all that sort of stuff. But it's, it's got this also this Mexican, as you know, uh, uh, Mexican horror films used a lot of the same sets. And they kind of, you know, Mex- Mexican horror is kind of a thing. Hmm. And, um, Just like the wrestling movies. Exactly, okay. exactly. They used and, to uh, Right. <laughs> and, um... And so, yeah, you see there's some really great scenes with the old man as he slowly becomes a vampire. And uh, there's like, you know, he would cut himself shaving and, you know, like he slowly you know, licks his thigh. It, it's, just, it's just a really, really creepy film. It's a very small film. Like I said, it, it, it's very reminiscent of uh, the Hammer movies of the 60s. The, uh, you know, in that, in that, you know, everything is kind of off. And it's got it's got that kind of conspiracy, you know, uh, supernatural. What's just beyond our understanding? That that's the kind of stuff that I love. Kind of that weird conspiracy, Illuminati, uh, uh, alchemy, that kind of stuff. That's the kind of gothic horror that I really love. Okay, okay. Did you did you like the did you see the the Netflix movie The Void? Oh yes. yeah. Yeah, that was good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was good. That was a good one. All right. I like yeah. that one and I like the I think Paul I liked, liked uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> was it the ceremony too? Was that was Yeah, that that's one? also a really good one. That's also that one's a good really good too. One. And like I also like The Witch and that kind of stuff. Like yeah. those are the kind of movies that really that really uh get me going. The got the more gothic y kinds. Yeah. Okay. So Mike, I, I uh, highly recommend it. I think it's probably of Del Toro. It's it's better than a lot of the stuff that, that it's better than some of the stuff that he's put out. 
Yeah. Sweet. All right, check it also out. Also, another one, another one that if you haven't seen it is also kind of in the same vein is The Devil's Backbone. Uh, that's his first movie after um, he came to America and then he went back to Spain to make to make that one. So okay, he's got some hidden gems in there. <laughs> so my wife says says uh, she thinks Ghost Rider, and I, I kind of agree with her. She thinks Ghost Rider is kind of a, a, a horror movie because it's so horrific that we couldn't watch the whole thing. <laughs> you could say that bad. You could say that about The Exorcist too. It's not a horror movie; it's a horrible movie. Yeah, horrible <laughs> movie. It's actually yes. rated down there with Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. It is that right. far down the list. Or any Jaws after the first one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Definitely after number two. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. Uh, all right, so Mike, what's your what's your second movie? You want my number two movie? Number two movie. Human Centipede. <laughs> Just oh. kidding. Human Centipede. Oh. Get it, number two movie. Yeah, Eddie. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It was a cheap show. It's low hanging. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> I I, all I do is have Paul's picture up there. I, I love looking at his reactions to my bad jokes. Okay. Um, seriously, my number two movie is Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, again, Ooh. classic, little, uh, you know, little cliche maybe, but I personally think that Nightmare on Elm Street uh, kind of put, uh, uh, for the time, and again, it, it, I was young when I saw it, um, not as young as Pete was when he saw, uh, I wasn't 10 when I saw Alien, but, um, right. <laughs> but you know, it was like, I, I had trouble sleeping that night. You know, it's not like you oh, yeah. see Jaws and, you know, you don't want to go into the water. You kind of have to go to sleep. Yeah, so, that's the beauty of it. It can kind of be an impediment to that when you when you're right. watching. That, yeah. That's that's what made that's what made that that uh, that film so. It, it so captured the the minds of teenagers because we're already halfway insomniacs anyway, and then suddenly that comes along. You're like, oh right. fuck! Yeah. Right, right. Confession time. Now I this asshole is going to. Friends, I went to go see it with my friends. I had to walk out. I I couldn't handle it. I, no. yeah. I couldn't yeah. handle it. I couldn't handle it. It, it was such, it, it was no. Freddy Krueger is <laughs> Freddy Krueger is a great, uh, you know, kind of that. It's it's one of those kind of very primal characters, um, and especially the 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 nails and the you know the the, the razor blades and and all that sort of stuff. It's just and um, what's his name? The guy who plays it, Robert uh, Eggland. Robert England. England. Yeah. Yeah. England. Yeah, yeah, England. Yeah, he's just. You know, it, later on it becomes cheesy, it, but it just a, becomes cheesy. That yeah, first yeah, movie, it it's not. But that first movie is a that first movie. That's Wes Craven. Wes Craven is a really was a really really smart guy. He was a philosophy professor before hmm. he started making movies. He's a really he was a really smart guy. May he rest in peace. Well, that's one of the things I wanted to touch on is I can't think of another movie that started out so prolific and uh, just amazing, uh, and then turned to jump the shark and have so many bad remakes of Bride of Freddy. And- we just said we just said Jaws. Jaws, Jaws literally Jaws jumped the shark. Critters. <laughs> I, I will go in order here. Critters, Child's Play, Friday the 13th, Halloween, uh, holy fucking shit, Saw has got, I mean, went off the rails after the first flick. Yeah. Uh, 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 was it Hostel? Um, Did Hostel Jesus, go off the rails? Uh, I thought the second one was pretty good. Oh no! It was the same movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> First of all, all right. Fuck. Oh. Weekend at Bernie's too, man. The, the guy's oh. gonna start rotting oh, eventually. Okay. <laughs> Weekend at Bernie's too. Fantastic film. Great cinema. Yes. It's exactly what you can expect to get from the '80s. No, yep. you're not. You're not. You're not. Delay, you're not uh, distracting me from uh, from my my colorful <laughs> two rant. Okay. Okay. The, a, mo- a movie that you you sit and you watch, and it is the opposite of a payoff. That goddamn ending. No one should have it and get that pay off at the ending. That is so, it's so bad. <laughs> All right, hey, let's stay on time. So oh, my, my second one, and this, this is funny. So this is funny. My second one is a, is a shitty seven, early 70s movie, and it was called Beware of the Blob. Right? Oh, and no. it, was also, it was also known as Son of the Blob. Now, mm. The reason why this had such a big effect... No, no, it's not a good movie at all. It's terrible. So, so that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's a good horror movie. I'm saying that I saw it when I was like seven. And it scared the fuck out of me. Because like this thing was coming out of the sink. It shot up out of the sink on somebody. And they're like, ah! And like melting. Someone was in the shower. And it like came out of the shower on them. And when I was like eight years old, I'd be like taking a shower and looking up at the shower head. Just like... <laughs> 
like it like for years for years this shit affected me so it just it it as movies go that have terrified me in my life that one has probably terrified me the most because you're not supposed to watch that shit when you're six, but it was it was one of those things. Yeah, it came. It was a late night TV movie. Everybody was in bed, and I was watching TV, and nobody was watching me. So uh, I was watching the movie. And you dude, you must absolutely love the scenes scenes of the black when it's going through the vents. You must absolutely dude, love that. Maybe that's why you know Paul. Maybe like, that's it. That might be why I love we the black so much. Zero. Because <laughs> it takes me back to the scariest, the movie that scared me the most. And like when I'm like, I'm good, so maybe a little bit of reliving that a little bit. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. You're, my, thank you, man. First, I appreciate it. No, I love it. My first cousin is about, uh, she's about seven years younger than me. And, and uh, she and her brother were spending the night over at my house with my brother. And, and uh, yeah, she was the only girl at the time uh, of the cousins. And um, we forced her to watch Piranha. Which was oh. written by John Sayles. John that didn't Sayles, make my list, but it scared shit. the fuck out of me. That is a that is a great it is a very good horror film. But and on the same night, uh, this is this is again this is the seventies, and she was sleeping too close to one of those uh, open vent heaters, and her hair, uh, her pillow, accidentally caught on fire. The same night, oh, Jesus Christ, with piranha. Yeah. So so I find out like like 10 years later, like right before she's getting married, that she's had a recurring dream for her entire adult her entire adult life where she's standing on a boat that is on fire, s- surrounded by piranha-infested waters. And what I said, what I said at her, at her uh, rehearsal dinner was, you don't have to be Sigmund Freud to figure this one out. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, no shit. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, so being a kid really does. It, it doesn't have to be good. It just has to smack you. It has to have that imprint on you. Alien, the, the commercial for Alien. Yeah. The commercial for, me, for the, the thing. The, the one movie that I'll never watch is It's Alive. That, oh. that one. <laughs> that where, the, where the thing comes out of the out of the baby carriage? Oh, I'll never oh, yeah. watch that. Nice. That's, that was, I, I was so. Oh, that was on TV. I, I was. I, I think that I was, was eleven nuts. when I saw that. <laughs> I never oh. saw it, but I remember it being on on TV in like 70, 78, 79. I was like ten years old. Yeah, I was like, I'm never gonna see that movie. What, oh, yeah, what, about, good. what about that movie Basket Case? What's in the basket? My oh. brother. <laughs> <Remember that? laughs> So many of those movies, and yet, you know, Jake Bible writes a story that's almost exactly that with a zombie, you know, brother hanging yeah. off his back. Yeah. Oh, nice. um, a kid's book, no less. Right. Oh, good. good. Fantastic. I wonder if that's where he got it. He may have got it from Possibly. Basket Case. Possibly there were so it. many of those little B movies that were so much fun to rent on a Friday night when you were like 14, 15. Let's go laugh at this crazy shit. And then yeah. sometimes you'd find yourself with the lights off looking behind you. <laughs> Even as ridiculous as they were, sometimes they would find something to hit a nerve with. Yeah. And it made them worth watching. <laughs> it made them worth watching. That yeah. part was I mean, fun. Evil, evil Dead 2 is like that for me. You know? I mean, I'd never heard of it. I didn't know anything about it. And then my <laughs> no, people you like, went into that blind? Thing. And then oh, I think mean, that's one of the greatest films of all time. Evil, evil Dead 2? Evil Dead oh, Two. Yeah. I like the bed. The, the first one, yes. Second one, not. No, the, the, the Evil Dead Two. I, uh, you'll understand when I go to my third film. All right. All right. No. So, all right. So, Paul, we're on your third film. Let's let's try right, well, and stay on time a little just, bit. I want to I want to give a comment on the phone on, on the phone on the chat room okay. real quick. Paul Walker says that there needs to be a T-shirt that says "Paul Cooley scarred my psyche." <laughs> T-shirt. Yeah. Paul Walker that, that, from the Dead. From beyond the grave, Paul no, Walker. No, not Paul Walker. I'm sorry, I'm John kidding, Walker. Kidding, John no, Walker. Easy, was John Walker. Sorry. It's sorry, true, John. John. No, you're totally right. Are you kidding? Paul Cooley has scarred my adulthood. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. Once again, it's all part yes. of the public service. That's right. I, st- I still cringe film... when I hear chicken scissors. But go ahead, Paul. Paul. Oh, <laughs> film number three, The Exorcist. Okay. Oh. Yes. Again, this kind of matches up with what uh, Charlie was saying about gothic horror. The Exorcist has is, is got elements of that. It has got the elements from the Hammer films, but it's all done so tastefully, so suspensefully. The soundtrack is amazing. The acting is, is bar none. The makeup effects are just ridiculously chilling. And what they did, I think the smartest thing they did is they stuck to the book. 
Mm -hmm. They absolutely stuck to the book. And that's what yeah. made that movie so good. They didn't try and play with it much. It played a little here and there, but not much. And that's what made that movie so damn good because the book is unbelievable. The book will blow your mind even 40 years after it's written. Mm -hmm. It is still just incredible. Um, and so is the audiobook, the 40th special edition read by William Peter Blatty. His okay. performance is great. Man, when he does the demon, it will give you the shivers. It's wonderfully yeah. done. Anyway, I would check that out. But The Exorcist, that is another movie that scarred my childhood. Really scarred the shit out of me. Really? Because okay. it opened that door into the religious hellfire bullshit that I had been exposed to as a youth uh, from various folks. It opened that gash wide and showed you kind of what it would look like if that's the way things were. Right. You know, if, if those things could enter through there. And I think that really touches us in a lot of ways because we are such a uh, puritanical nation. Ugh, so I think that kind of thing, we still have our roots in that. And I think that that film really jarred in the book, really jarred the American psyche because of, of that. And that's another thing why I think it's still terrifying today because it does rip open that hole. Yeah, as someone who grew up Catholic, um, you know, seeing seeing the the priest as hero is kind of a, an an interesting thing. And it, and it's like I I had priests at my high school who who also claimed to have have uh, performed and or witnessed uh, exorcisms themselves. And um, I saw I I did not see this movie till I was an adult when they re released it. Um, the 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 remix, the not the remix, but the 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 uh, updating Remastered. of it. Yeah, the remastered one where they they fixed all the colors and that sort of stuff. And when she walks down those stairs, oh yeah, and, the, and that spider and the, her head is oh goodness gracious, it's just such a and that that one that movie in particular. There's like there's the there's that weird canon of films by great Hollywood directors in this time period where they all decided oh we're all going to do our take on horror. So you have Omen. A, Roman, yeah yeah you have the Omen. You have Roman Polanski doing Roman's uh, Rosemary's Baby. Later on, you have uh, Kubrick doing The Shining. Now, if you're yeah. a King versus Kubrick, that's a different argument. But you had these major directors. F William Friedkin yep. is coming off of The French Connection and The French Connection 2. No, he didn't do French Connection 2. He's coming off The French Connection, which is which is a, another – you want to talk about a perfect movie, a perfect action film if you watch those chase scenes and everything that goes in it. And then he turns his eye to horror, and he brings that same kind of uh, almost clinical look to it. Because there, there, the, there is kind of the atmosphere, but it's a lot more, it's a lot more clinical than a lot of the – You're in a rich person's it. house. You're in a rich person's yeah. house with two housekeepers. You've got money – Piles of money, Scrooge McFucking Duck money everywhere. You know, everybody <laughs> knows her no matter where she goes. She's got hundreds of thousands of fans just in that city alone. And look at what she's dealing with. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the outside is a perfect all the time, except at night. It is the, that, especially that one night. It is this perfect scene of just being plopped down in a fluent neighborhood. And that's that. Mm -hmm. That's that. There's nothing strange going on in that particular area. There's all sorts of other things that happen, but it looks safe. It looks austere. Mm -hmm. It looks like it belongs. And then you get into the house and then you start seeing all the shit go wrong. And suddenly all that clinicality kind of gets stripped away. The rooms get more grungy. You mm -hmm. start seeing uh, um, the, uh, defects here and there because the housekeepers aren't doing their jobs as well as they used to. <laughs> really? <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah, and of right. course, the, the fact that they're, you know, changing out green peas, soup, spattered drapes, curtains, bed sheets, you know, pajamas, whatever, 24 hours a day. But that it has that feel of slow decay mm -hmm. that comes back. And, and then, uh, you know, when uh, Max von Sydow enters the picture, holy oh. shit. Right. One of the greats. I mean, just explodes. All right, so, Pete, we better move on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I want, want one comment. You're talking about like, like if, if we did that today where we took major directors, like major big screen directors right now to like take their take on horror, uh, if Michael Bay did it, the price of fake blood would go up because there'd be so many exploding bodies everywhere that <laughs> there would not be enough fake blood to go Michael around. Michael Bay, please, please. <laughs> Do not remake scanners. I do right. not want to see oh, 19 goodness, heads go off in a room. <laughs> right. Oh, right. All right. So where, where were we, Mike? I think we're on uh, – wait, well, you did – well, I lost uh, track. Tra Charlie, I mean, did you do your... Is it my turn? Is it my yeah. turn? 
Yeah. Okay. For, for number two or number three? Number three. I think we're on to number three, right? Yeah, I think we are. Yep, yep. Okay, yeah. All right. Okay, so... Um, Speaking of Hammer I'll films. Mine. I'll do mine. So, so I'm going to go in a much more lighthearted vein. Uh, you was. Oh, no, no. This one is, though... This movie definitely affected me when I this first This one I've college. seen. This one okay, I've good. actually seen. Okay, okay. But it was a long time ago. Okay, we're talking so there there's two things that I love. There's, you know, gothic and then there is cheese. Camp. No, this <laughs> is camp. Okay. This is camp. Uh I love John Waters. I love all that sort of stuff. So there is a definite uh 60s cinema has a huge camp factor. And we're going to talk about the abominable Doctor Fives. I love Doctor Fives. Yeah, it's 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 genius. Vincent yeah. Price. Vince That's the Price. first Saw, right? It's right, like the exactly, original Saw. Exactly. Hmm. So Vincent Price plays a, uh, a, a a research scientist whose wife has died, and he identifies the seven doctors who were in the operating room. Now he gets into a car accident, so he can no longer speak, but he sends out this nurse assistant who also never says anything uh, to kill all the doctors who were responsible for his wife's death. And they, he does it by uh, the plagues that were set upon Egypt. And one of the best ones is, is he covers one of them, spoiler alert, he covers, he covers one of these doctors in lime juice and then sets cicadas on him. And then all of a sudden the cicadas fly away and they're left with a, with a naked <laughs> skeleton, but it's all hmm. bright colors, psychedelic. Uh, he, he lives in this, he's got a, uh, he's got an automaton band that he plays organ with and it's all big collars, you know, all this sort of stuff. Um, there was one sequel, Dr. Five's Returns, which is also a really good one. Uh, but it's funny. It's also funny in its way. And then there is a spiritual sequel that oh, you God. won't believe. I came across this one on YouTube. It's Vincent Price. It's called Theater of Blood. And instead oh, of... Just Robert that. Wood just said that in the chat room. Swear to okay, God. That was so funny. Theater of Blood is also an amazing film because... In, in in you've got Vincent Price and Dr. Fibes who never says anything. He's Vincent Price. He's got that voice, but he never says anything except in voiceover. In right. Theater of Blood, he does all of the Shakespeare monologues. Oh, because he's, no. a Shakespearean, uh, he's a Shakespearean actor, but that's all he ever says. And he has, as his assistant, Diana fucking Rigg, Mrs. Peel herself, in Brian Jones' drag, she, she's wearing a, a, a Brian Jones of the Rolling Stones. She's wearing a, a blonde bob a wig and a blonde mustache going out killing critics of this actor's <laughs> performance. <laughs> These three films, they're, uh, they're all basically the same. They're all revenge guns, but they are just gloriously psychedelic and so campy. It's the kind of stuff that, that like I said, Waters would would uh, revisit with all the Divine films or right. uh, or any of that stuff. And 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 just to watch Vincent Price unhinged is certainly it's just worth price of admission. And yeah. I know I think all of them are on YouTube, so so I think you can see all those free. But Doctor Fives, I remember seeing that for the first time, and it just opened up this entire world of other cinema. And that 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 became kind of my my that was my on ramp to the Hammer films, which I then you know, which led to you know you know some of the others, including my favorite Vampire Circus, which is still a, a that's a great film. Vampire Circus is a lot more serious, uh, right, but wait. these weird. I just love psychedelic stuff, and and that's and that's uh, that's where all this goes. All right, well, let's wrap, we got to wrap this up, Mike. What's your number three? Uh, aren't we going with? Uh... Did, no, Paul already oh, did his. I went. Paul I went. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, okay. This actually, at first I was having trouble. I was texting you, Pete. I was like, I don't want to do my third one. I'm struggling. And all of a sudden, it just came to me. Are you ready for this, gentlemen? The Fly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which yeah, one? That's a good one. The yeah. first one. Come on. The Fly. I have to ask. <laughs> oh, yes, oh, oh, oh. Cronenberg the, or Vincent Price? Oh, uh, no, uh, uh, Goldblum. The, the Goldblum one. Because okay, I didn't see the other. Yeah. The first. So I, yeah, I was. Well, well, the remake. The remake. 
Yeah. Mike really doesn't know. Sorry. Help me! Help me! <laughs> I no, I do remember that. No, I was okay. thinking that wasn't there a fly too? Yes, there, there was. was. Yeah, I see, that's what I, I, that's what I meant. Uh, so yes, but for clarification, I do. I meant the the fly, the uh, this the remake, and uh, I, for me again, it was a, a kind of a critical time for me to see it in the movies. Uh, again, I, I, the effects were at a point. I mean, you look back now and you're like, oh wow, what the hell? No, but, not too bad. Uh, at really? the t at the time, it was pretty good, you know. And you're, you, I think for me, it's like I started, you know, putting myself in that position. Going, man, that would really suck if I I woke up in the morning and my fingernail just starts coming off, or you know what I mean? It's like that kind of what if I, what if I was like, you know, by proxy happening to me and ugh. Kind oh, the gra the gradual the ga gradual yeah. deterioration. And his sudden cravings for this, that, and the other, <laughs> yeah. and everything else. You're just sitting there going, oh, my Ugh. God. Like, like, the first time you, like, a, pukes on something, is like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, such a, it's such a continuation of Cronenberg's theme of body horror, which starts with scanners yeah. and video drone. And Dead ends ringers. up, and, yeah, and then ends up with Dead Ringers and Crash, which is <sighs> a, you know, then he takes you where he goes body horror as sexual turn on, you know. Uh, but, yeah, and the fly is kind of like a, uh, it's an interesting kind of peak for all of those because because it is classic material but reinvented in such a way where you're almost like yeah i could kind of see this happening sort of you know, right. if yeah. somebody could come up with that technology and goldblum is like goldblum is almost like lizardy in this one not just yes. like insect yeah. Around, but almost, yeah 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 he really he really uh grabs the character so his stupid. his smarminess plays through in the middle. It really oh, does yeah. bring no, out that, the smarminess. No, he was good. dude. He was so, so uh, perfect for that role. It yes, was, that, yeah. that was no. so perfect for him. Yep. And yeah, uh, the, the first I, time he pukes, he pukes on that guy, and his hand melts off, and I'm just like, oh god! <laughs> and then he just casually pukes on his ankle, and his foot comes off. Like, oh come on! <laughs> yeah, it was just it was nasty. So yeah, that's all I want to say about that. Okay. So right. yeah, go ahead, Pete. Great, movie. Great movie. Great movie. All right. So look, we're we're running short on time, and I'm the last one. I got the last movie, and we don't really need to talk a lot about this. But the Evil Dead, the Evil Dead, fucking changed horror. It really. I mean, it just like shaky cam. Shaky cam was invented out of that. Um, no, two's awesome. Don't get me wrong, but but Evil, the first Evil Dead was actually scary. It's one of the few it horror movies that actually fucking scared me as an adult like i literally jumped out of my skin several times watching that and thinking about it later and just like this is so creepy like when the people are like ah, ah, you know and their fucking eyes are all sunken in and they're uh it, it really was super creepy and but also like super good campy but not too campy that didn't happen until two but then i loved all the camp anyway but the the first evil dead straight up horror very fucking creepy Yep, I can still watch the first one. The second one, no. No, I, <laughs> Come on, I no. love it. I, 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 I got to admit it. I'm Army of Darkness. I love I Army love Army of Darkness. Darkness. That, that's a different animal. That's a that's completely a, Come on. different animal. Because he took the Harryhausen skeletons and he gave them dialogue. Yeah. Yes, I know. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, Come on, what are you doing? Let's go. Ah. <laughs> so bad. So fucking bad. Awesome. That's Watch where my you. campsite comes out in Evil Dead 2. And Gee, I, I, I hadn't noticed. Yeah, <laughs> for <Ferrat to Messi. laughs> Pete, right. Pete, Pete, what is that movie that we saw with the you know hurdy gurdy? Oh God, it's brain, brain damage. Brain, not brain games. No, not brain. Brain damage, brain game. Brain, brain damage or something. Brain like damage. Oh, yeah. Jesus, you know what you I'm talking this? about? I think so. No, old it's, it's this little flight? piece of this yeah. little piece of poop that that talks. It like gets hey, on his Brian. neck. It's not really poop. It's like an alien or something. Yeah. And it like what attaches body? and it gives him this drug and he and he yeah. craves yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But they have to like I've eat never people. Seen that one. Oh, it's it's not oh, really yeah. a must see. It's not. That's what it is. It's a must. <laughs> it's a total B movie. Uh, if if you want a, a B movie, yeah. It's, it's B drop, movie. It's drop two at, two tabs of acid. Watch this and call me in the morning. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's this whole scene where he's like puking going through this withdrawal like like his heroin withdrawal from this creature's drug and he's like come on brian you're gonna want it. he's like in the sink he's like you're gonna want me back come on brian you know you will <laughs> right and he's like go away he's just like da -da -da. he starts singing his, and the hurdy gurdy hey brian <laughs> it's fucking it's so stupid you're gonna want me and i'm not gonna do it <laughs> she got it's a, it's a uh, thing. Anyway, uh, moving on. Hey, all right. Hey, uh, you know what we're gonna do right now? We're gonna do. Oh, 
Oh, yes. Oh, crap. It's game time with the Mythwits, uh, but I got the wrong graphic on here. Again, Mike. God damn it. I don't uh, even know how sorry. to fix it. Shit. That fixes, that fixes it. Yes, it's game time with the Mythwits. I will be your game master. And this week, we are playing Demonic Creepies or Tasty Cheesies. So oh, no. I, <laughs> yes. Why did I know he was going to do a, Why? Do a I, I, cheese? I, I'm going to suck so bad at this. Uh, you, I, everybody I, does. No, no, no. Very well. so it's, we've it's, had these conversations about being food before. So. It's, it's, it's the whole point of the fucking game. Nobody knows. Oh, so I, know, I know. What I have done is I have taken... I have taken... I, I did a, a names of demons, and there's a whole list on Wikipedia. Hunt, like a couple hundred of them. Uh, I've taken demon names... And I've taken cheese names, and there's hundreds of cheeses. And uh, I put them on the, uh, I put the, God, this music is just not going to go away, is it? Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> kind of annoying, isn't it? Yeah. Why is it still going? <laughs> there it goes. All right. Fuck, I don't know it's so long. Anyway, so it didn't seem so long before. Anyway, so what we're going to do is. Oh, we're doing this live. Shit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a name, and you're going to tell me whether it is a cheese or a demonic creepy. So okay. let's let's do this, and then now I can put the score on, uh, like I was doing before. But I have to like do that, okay? And it's not showing now. Why is it not showing? You're not showing because oh, because I haven't turned you on. All right, there you go. All right, so <laughs> there we go. Sorry. All right. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down my list. Mike, you will go first. Basically, it's a right or wrong. One point for getting it right. Zero points for getting it wrong. Mike. Uh, am I keeping score somewhere? Uh, yeah, in the this or that. Okay. First tab on the list. Got it, sir. Okay, Already. Great. Fantastic. All right. So, Mike, first one is Layak. Layak. Is that some kind of creepy, monstery, demony thing? Or is that a tasty, yummy, put on a cracker, maybe a little pickle, maybe some mustard, a little pimento? Uh, I mean, first of all, so it's not a cheese, but I still wouldn't mind having some layak on a cracker because nothing's, yeah. nothing would taste better than a demon-y monster on a cracker. Let's put it. Well, Mike, um, you know what? Hmm? In folklore of Bali, the layak is a mythical figure in the form of a flying head with entrails still attached. Oh, so yeah, I love those. And guts and great. Yeah. Didn't I tell you it tastes good on a cracker? Yeah, good, yeah. Nothing like nice intro. It's, like, it's almost like a scrapple, really. Oh, <laughs> it's a sounds oh. like a ham with eels attached. Yeah, <laughs> yes. basically, yeah. Hey, wait a minute. I'm getting, I'm getting horny now. No. Yeah, oh, I was about Paul. to say. Yeah. <laughs> Paul. Only, only after it's been set out for a while and allowed to get mushy. Right. Right. Yes. Number two, number two. I was two. wondering... Two. wondering if, yeah. I was wondering if he microwaved it first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hadn't your... thought that deeply no. about it, Charlie. I yeah. <laughs> I actually <laughs> told that story in class to my students. <laughs> all right, all right. It was not funny. Like, go, go with the game. Go with pa the game. Pa Brimstone. <laughs> Brimstone. Excuse me. Brimstone. 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 That's... Is that a creature or is that a cheese? Brimstone mm. is what's burning in hell, if I remember it, correctly. It, that is correct. But so I don't a... think it's a demon. It is just related to a demon. It's demon poop. A cheese? <laughs> All right, I'm going to say it's a cheese. That is correct. Brimstone is a Gouda-style cheese made from pasteurized cow's milk sourced from Holston, Jersey, uh, Frisian cows with jalapeno peppers, Habano, habanero peppers and spices. So yeah, it's a it's a hot Ooh. cheese. So like yeah, it. it's very good. Very hey, good. hey right. Paul, Gouda answer. Uh, all right, uh, Charles. <laughs> Let's just keep going because that no, no, no. So <laughs> Charles, oh, that's some Christ. stinky shit. <laughs> kabak, kabak, kabak. And I can oh, spell any cheese. of these you want. Kabak. That's a cheese. It's a cheese. Okay. Said to be Scotland's oldest cheese, Kebak is a rich double cream cheese which allows, or which is allowed to age naturally without the addition of rennet. Very good. Man. I think I've seen that, I think I've seen that in Whole Foods, to be honest Sweet. with you. Sweet. All right, Mike. The people that make haggis should not be allowed to make cheese. First of all. <laughs> That's you should talk about haggis. No, 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 no. 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 I'm making haggis on Wednesday. I am. Oh, I'm making nice. haggis oh, on Wednesday. Sweet. 
God damn, I wish I could come down. Are you going to fuck the sheep first? <laughs> I am not. I, am, oh I mean, God. after all, we're talking the true Scottish fashion here. Right. <laughs> Lift your kilt, son. Lift your Only kilt. Only if my wife lets me. Okay. Well, what is that? Is that... You can make it a family event. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Two sheeps, one cup. I don't know. <laughs> so oh, Mike... my God. <laughs> all right, we are officially <laughs> off the rails. Oh, Mike, Mike, sorry. Mike. Sorry. Mike. Sorry. <laughs> It's getting hot in here. Your word. I'm you're, getting you're, the vapors. Your your cheese. a fart a lot. Your cheese or demon is oni. O n i oni. Or oni or uh, oni. I don't know. This is me. This yeah. is you. Oni. 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 Can o oni be eaten on a cracker? Because it's cheese. Oni could be eaten on a cracker because it's a demon. I don't know. You tell right, me. Right, I know. I know. What you going but with? The hard, the hard part is getting the demon to get on the cracker. But anyway, right, that's yeah. a whole other story. It's a cheese. It's a cheese. Okay, right. Um, that's our first wrong answer, Mike. Oni that are mean? a kind of yokai, supernatural ogre or troll in Japanese folklore. They are typically typically portrayed as hulking figures with one or more horns growing out of their head. Yeah. So there, Mike. There you well, go, Mike. Where, where was Paul your no-shaking head, Paul, when I needed it? Where was your... Right. Mm -hmm. I was. I was shaking my head like I was shaking my head. <laughs> All right, so, so, Paul... Like, I was like, damn. This God, was, that, this. that one was easy. <laughs> so, so, Paul... Yeah. Zat Atar, because that's like a Z-A and then like an apostrophe and then an A-T-A-R Barata. Zatar Barata. It sounds like like a line from Evil Dead, right? But it could it does. Be, it sounds like something you pull. But it could, thing, you know? but it yeah, could some, be something you melt onto a cheesesteak too. You never know. Somebody pulled that out of a you know fake. Oh, well, there's only fake copies. A, 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 a non-existent copy of the Necronomicon. That's what I'm thinking. So it does saying, sound Lovecraftian, doesn't it? It does. It does. So you think it's a think it's a demon? Shit. Or do you think it's a cheese? <sighs> or do you think it's a demon? Because I'm an idiot, I'm gonna go with cheese. <laughs> Gonna it's go good. with cheese. You know what? I would have gone with cheese. I yep. picked that one specifically because it sounded like a demon name. Zatara <laughs> Barata is an Italian barata that is filled with labni, a Middle Eastern kefir cheese, Italian mascarpone, and Zatar, whatever, a Middle Eastern Zatar, herb yeah. mixture. Jesus, so, because like the I, because of I cheese. Live, uh, it's because I live in uh, in Glendale, the home of the Armenians. I knew what Zatar is, and uh, uh -huh. I actually had. I actually had burrata, uh, burrata uh, Saturday night in an Italian nice. restaurant. It's very it's bad, mozzarella. It's very soft mozzarella. Good All stuff. right. Well, Charles, your word let's see, is... Uh, okay, let's see how you go with me now. Your word is ifrit. ifrit. Oh, that's a demon. Yeah. I had to put some in there that was at least somebody might know. All right. Ifrit are supernatural creature in some Middle Eastern stories. In Islam, this term refers to the most powerful and dangerous of the jinn. And of and, uh, course, the original, the cover art of the original Dungeon Master's Guide is it? That is correct. It is a, it's a, it is an free. Fantastic, good job, Mike. Here's yours, nice and easy, like that one, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mike never gets set up. All right, Mike. Anzu, Anzu, A N Z U. Hmm. The U does have like a symbol on top. So I don't know what that is, but it's that's. Is, that it, is it like this kind of a symbol, or <laughs> it's kind of it's, a, it's is almost it two dots or a it's, line? It's it's it's, it's a it's a it's a. Uh, uh, is it a tilde? Carrot. Isn't that what they call it? A carrot. A carrot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh well, if it's a carrot, the carrots you know are compliments <laughs> with cheese. Well, let's pronounce it one more time. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but it's Anzu. Anzu. Anja. A Nizu. I don't know. Anus Zoo. Anus Zoo, maybe. Uh, sure. Well, uh, let's go with cheese. Let's go with cheese. All right, Mike. Anzu oh. is a lesser divinity or monster in several uh, Mesopotamian religions. He was depicted as a massive bird who can breathe fire and water, although Anzu is alternately depicted as a lion headed eagle. That one I no. didn't know. That no, Anzu is. is good. I, I knew it. Yeah. Of course you did. Gary, you did. <laughs> really, Mesopotamian deities. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why don't you ask Paul if it's wet in Texas? Yeah, <laughs> right. <okay. laughs> All right, Paul. 
Sharfam. Sharfam. And I'm going to say, I, I, I don't know if I'm, it could be Sharpam. I don't know, but it's S-H-A-R-P-H-A-M. But I think it's Sharfam. I think. Hey, let's have some Sharfam. <laughs> right. Sharfam. God. That's tough. That yeah. Tough. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> you watch. This is going to be Mesopotamian. It's a damn cheese. Paul? Sharfam is an unpasteurized, I don't even know what this word is, columnimerous <laughs> type English <laughs> cheese. Columnimerous. A lot of something or other. Veratu rectal. English cheese made at the Sharfam Dairy in South Devon. Do you guys mind? The best kind is of it, cheese is it, intestinal it, it, cheese. Come on. Yeah, right. Is, nice. Is, is everything ass with you guys? No, you it just is, take yeah. out the intestines and just yeah. scrape them Pretty down, much. you know, and collect all that matter and make a cheese out of it. Yeah. Mm. Good stuff. Yeah. No, that's I not even cheese. Had dinner yet, motherfucker. I Charles. Think we don't... <laughs> Let's get through this. <laughs> Charles, we're almost done. Uh, that's okay. how you make a demon, I think. <laughs> You want a demon? That's how you make no, a no, demon. No, if I want a demon, I'll just go to Taco Bell and channel the Kevin Smith uh, shit demon from. Uh, yeah. uh, right, Batman. yeah. <laughs> yes, I've I've made a few of those demons. All right, Charles, Nick, Nicky, oh god damn it, Nick Ciolio, N I C C I O L O, Nick 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 Kylie Nick Ciolio, Ciolio, yeah, sure, Nicky Yolo. <laughs> Nicky Sounds like Zello. a Jersey mobster to me. Yeah. Right. Hey, Nicky Yolo. Nicky Yolo yeah, yeah, over here. Yeah, we live <laughs> down on the block. Hey, Nicky Yolo. Oh, okay. I think you stumped me on this one. So I'm, I'm guessing I'm going with cheese. Cheese. That word oh. is a pasteurized cow milk cheese from La Quesera of Italy of Piedmont region. Oh, Piedmont, northern Italy. Yes. There you go. All right, Mike. Yes. Dracavac. Demon. 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 <laughs> demon. Hey, Mike. I'm going with demon. You got good instincts. <laughs> In South Slavic mythology, it is described as a furry humanoid. Oh, you know furries. Furry uh, humanoid yeah. forest yeah. demon bearing long claws on the front limbs. What is? What was it? Uh, Drev Drakavak. Drakavak. Okay, I've never heard of that. That's okay. He's not speaking it right. I have okay. no idea how it's pronounced, but that ain't it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you know this, but with, with the delays and everything, I just pretty much guessed before I even heard what he said. So right. yeah. yeah, I yeah, so, we we know. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It wasn't apparent at all, Mike. Oh, all right. Whew. So Paul, Paul, <laughs> Malvern, Malvern. Malvern. You know what I mean, Vern? Hey, Vern. Malvern. Isn't that, isn't that the guy in the Van Halen videos? Could be. Um, Malvern. How, how's it spelled? M A L V E R N. Demon. Demon. Paul? Malvern ah. is an English cheese that is produced in the Severn Valley region of the United Kingdom. All right, Charles, this is your chance for the win. Your chance for the win. All you got to do is get this one right, and you win. Okay. Nama. N A A. M A H. Nama. 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 Mr. Hanuman. That is not a cheese, so that is not a cheese. <laughs> Nama appears in the Zohar as one of the mates of the Archangel Samuel. She, along with her cohort Lilith, causes epilepsy in children. Wow, that's, that's, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Wow. Bill, you got biblical on us. Call yeah. Child Protective Services on that. <laughs> We're with this before the hey, Bible, but yeah. You yeah, know what that means, true. Charlie? You are our winner. Charles wow. wins with four points. Paul comes in second with three. Mike, as usual, up the rear with two. <laughs> so <laughs> two points. <laughs> one, two. <laughs> As I as I once told as I once told my father, don't never mess with me on, on about imaginary subjects. <laughs> there you go, fantastic. Don't oh, never we went, mess with me. No, we went super long. Don't ever mess with me on imaginary subjects. We went super and long. Cheese. Yeah, and cheese, cheese. Even though I'm lactose intolerant, can't get let's, enough of this stuff. Let's do this. Oh let's God. wrap this shit up. Paul, I'm lactose intolerant cheese expert. Oh God. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just channeled, channeled Meg Ryan from Forget Paris or whatever that movie was she did with uh, Kevin Klein. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Talk about Thanks talk about that. having a bathroom demon. All right, so Paul, <laughs> <laughs> Paul, where can we find you? And, and what what is it you make? And what can we where can we find you? What would you say you do here? Yeah, um, what, is it, what the fuck did you? Why are you here? I'm Paul Lee Cooley. I write horror, sci-fi, fantasy, etc. Uh, been putting out podcasts for for over ten years. You can read all or listen to all my stuff for free at shadowpublications.com. Or you can get it uh, you know, on iTunes, all the various places. My books are out on Audible, uh, Amazon, et cetera, at Infinitum. Come check them out. And they are fantastic. They fantastic. are fantastic. Yes. Thank you, guys. I and Charles. Care. Charles, where can we find you? Well, they, okay, this, is, this might be a long list, unfortunately. Uh, if, you want to, if you want to see my movies... You can uh, search under Charlie Brown, uh, Angels Die Slowly, My Serial Killer Noir, which would make a great Halloween uh, show, yeah. uh, is, right, is streaming right now on Tubi TV, T-U-B-I TV. You can also, if you have a Roku, you can go to Tubi and watch it on your television. Mm-hmm. Uh, just search for Angels Die Slowly. I looked, it is there. Uh, I have recently put out, uh, I have one novel available right now under the name C.D. Brown. Uh, on Griffinwood Press. Thank you, David Wood. And uh, it's called Vamp City. And hot on hot off the presses right now is the audiobook. It's on Audible, and it is read by the illustrious Veronica Chiguer. Nice. And, uh, she did a fantastic job on that. So I'm very excited about that. And for pre-order, if you go to Black Rose Writing, uh, dot com and search for looking back on Sodom uh, under the name Charles D. Brown. This is my literary novel about the year before Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. Uh, if you go for pre-order and say uh, pre-order 2018, you can get 15% off the book. Very so nice. uh, please go pre-order that. I, I, that was a uh, it wasn't my master's thesis, but it was uh, it was damn close, and I'm really proud of that novel. I'm very proud of Vamp City, uh, both of them. I kind of you know skirt both worlds. Uh, got a couple of I got one more book from Griffinwood Press coming out in January, and another collection of short stories coming out in, in March. So uh, follow Charles D. Brown or C. D. Brown for both of my. And you can find me at charliebrownwriter.com, where all the links for everything will be. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Vamp yeah. City is on my list. It's it's in the queue of, of books. I'm trying to get through Dune now. Never read Dune. I'm reading it for the oh, like, Dune's a great it for book. It's gonna take yeah. it forever, but it's a great book. Yeah. yeah. Um, and hey guys, this was a Halloween special. Happy Halloween, everybody! If you're, yes. if you're watching this now, happy early Halloween. Uh, if you're watching this later, then you, whatever. Uh, anyway, uh, the next we'll time, Paul, no. Paul and and Charles, the next time you talk to me, I will have written fifty thousand words. Yeah. Yes. Whoop. I'm, 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 I'm baby. I'm, I'm doing it. You, brother. I'm doing it too. I'm, I'm doing, doing it too. Fantastic. So, hey, I'm so a... so you you are both encouraged to give me shit. Like if I get to we get 10 days in and you contact me and say, "So, you're at 17,000 words." Right? You know, just make sure I stay on target. Sit I'm down and this. bleed, bitch. I'm Sit down it. and bleed. Yep. Mike's Why taking over the show. For the for Writing next month. Writing is easy. Just yep. sit down at the typewriter and open a vein. Red yeah, there you go. Pretty yep. much. Let it flow. Let Enough it flow. Vein. Yeah, Mike will be running the show for November. So oh no. Got, oh, good I'm luck. Sorry. Good luck, oh, everybody. No. Good luck. Oh, we got. I got everything pretty much booked now, so we're good. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, good times. And we do have some good guests coming up. We got Fra- You know, Fraser Kane. You guys know Fraser Kane. Fraser uh, Kane. Astronomy Universe cast. Today. Universe today. Astronomy, Astronomy cast, cast yeah. with Pamela Gay. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, anyway, yeah. So he's coming on. So that'd be good. We're going to talk about the uh, Parker Solar Probe. Ah, Maybe. yes. I was yeah. uh, just about to post an article about that. Another great horror movie, Sunshine. Yeah, great movie. Yeah. I love yeah, it. Great science good. fiction yeah. horror. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Hey, if we keep talking, it's going to be like forever late. So yes. we're already there. So everybody, you've just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Mythwits. We're live on Facebook. 
uh, Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Please ask our guest questions or just banter with the other Mythfits. We had a lot of people talking in the room. It was awesome. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episode on Facebook or YouTube. Find us on Facebook and Twitter as Mythwits. Check out Mythwits.com. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Uh, do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. And make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread Mythwits love over the entire planet. This is a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one to share. Uh, Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it. Don't sell it. And hey, hey, Paul, don't listen to it if you hear the sound of sizzling bacon mixed with the odor of hot throw up. Make yes. sure to check out <laughs> aetherforge.com for more cool stuff and to join our mailing list. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And watching and commenting and all that good stuff. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike? A couple of uh, alternative shout-outs in the uh, chat room for other movies. Sharknado. Oh, zombie yeah. Beavers. Oh, Devil oh, Rain. Oh. At that, that, no comments. Edward Scissorhands. And American Psycho. Mm. Yes. Nice. All right, everybody. Good night. <laughs>